Okay, let's have a look at digestion and nutrition and why these things are important. So, essentially, my head's in the way, I can't really move my head at the moment. Um, all living things, the cells in each of all living things, the cells in all living things, need energy, oxygen, water, nutrients, waste removal, and this idea of reproduction. Um, and also, we don't really talk about too much in year eight, but the ability to sense and respond to their environment. So, energy. All cells need a source of energy from somewhere. And essentially, life on Earth is based on the energy from the sun. We need oxygen, so we can do cell respiration and break down glucose. We need water. You're about 70% water. And that water is really about allowing all the chemicals within your body to be able to diffuse and, and move around. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to deliver them. We need nutrients from our digestion, from our food, for, for growth and maintenance and repair of cells and tissues. We need to get rid of the wastes. So all those wastes from our, um, our chemical processes that happen in the cell need to get rid of. And we need to make new cells. We need to be able to repair, maintain and replace cells as they age and die. And of course, in time, replace ourselves. So um, reproductive systems for you know for making babies. Um, so plants are what we call, I'm in the wire, I'll get my head out of the way. Plants are what we call water troughs. That means they're able to take organic materials from the environment and create other things from them. So they use the energy of the sun to create glucose and, and the other things they need. We can't do that. We have to eat other stuff. So the main, oops, is that going to move again? Why is that not moving? So um, most of the water troughs are plants, um, and these create organic molecules like glucose, and some bacteria can do this as well. Some of them are photosynthetic bacteria, others are chemosynthetic, and they can do this in the absence of light. They do it in deep, dark vents in volcanoes and under the ocean where there's no light arriving. So they're really important because they get the energy going for everything else. Get, we'll eat them later on. And you can go along and sing the uh, wonderful song here at the YouTube channel. We won't go there just right now. Um, so photosynthesis, I'm head of mine's in the way, is it? Photosynthesis sees the plant taking in carbon dioxide and water and using chlorophyll to combine those two with the energy from the light to make glucose. This is glucose. And we get these two byproducts, some leftover water and some leftover oxygen. So rather useful byproducts. Oops, that's not working. Why is that button not working? Um, so essentially, uh, autotrophs can make the energy they need, well not make it, transform the energy they need um, and produce some really interesting little byproducts for everyone else. The opposite is the thing called cell respiration. In this little video here, will do some cell respiration for you, but I won't play that right now. Um, and here, the glucose is taken, is consumed with oxygen, produces carbon dioxide, plus some more water, but most importantly, it releases the energy inside the glucose for the, the, the cells to make use of. Now, plants do this for themselves. We do say respiration, we have to eat the plant first. The plant will do so respiration and it'll store the excess glucose it makes and in time it'll come back and use it for energy purposes. So we're what we call consumers. We're a heterotroph. We're a thing that consumes other stuff to get our energy. Um, and our energy comes in three forms, basically. We mostly um, need things like carbohydrates. And all the carbs you eat are essentially complex forms of glucose. So the intent is to consume that and release the glucose in it so we can um, use it in our bodies. We also like to eat um, lipids. So lipids are a, a nice way of saying fats and oils. Um, while there's lots of energy in them and we will store excess energy as lipid in our bodies, most of the energy in our fat is broken down in the digestive system so we don't see that much of it. What we're really getting is the fatty acids and the triglycerides, the things that make lipids, to use to make our own lipids. 
which we do all the time, the cell membranes, the lipid, the hormones that are controlling your journey through puberty are lipid based. So they they need fats and oils for that. Um, and of course, we talk a lot about proteins. And again, proteins contain quite a bit of energy, but we, again, that energy is lost essentially in the, in the breaking down of the protein to its amino acids. Um, and we need those amino acids to make our own proteins. So lots of uh, protein needs to be in our diet because we are based on protein. We, you know, our, our whole operation is controlled by proteins. Um, and of course, we also need vitamins and minerals and things in our in our diet. So lots of vitamins in our many coloured vegetables. They, they tell us to eat as much different coloured vegetables as possible um, because they, each of those different colours often relates to different vitamin. Um, vitamins are important things like vitamin C allow your body to take up iron. Vitamin D allows you to take up calcium. So these things are really important parts of your diet. And of course we also need lots of different metal salts and mineral salts. And these again come in our vegetables and all sorts of different food that we eat. Um, we need iron for hemoglobin. We need all sorts of other different things. Calcium to make bones and to drive our, our nervous system. But I'll talk about that another time. So we have to digest this stuff. It's not just a matter of seeing in the sun and making it, we have to actually go and chomp it up and swallow it and create opportunities to get the good stuff out of our food. So we have these quite complex systems for that purpose. And lots of chemicals that are called enzymes. This, this here is a pancreas. And the pancreas releases lots of these enzymes into the top of the small intestine, just in the bile duct. The bile ducts are really useful for making a... a um, bile salts, which break down our lipids in our diet. But of course we start with the teeth. You've got to masticate. You have to chew up that food and make it into small pieces before you swallow it. And then, oh, sorry, we're going simple first. I was going to go get carried away with mammals. Um, simple things, of course, can just absorb stuff from the surroundings by diffusion, but they're simple. You know, a couple of cells, you know, they're not, they're not big things. As we get more and more complex, we get more and more complex systems. Um, and I'm going to jump ahead and talk about us. So, where's my head in the way? Can I get rid of my head? Oh, no. um, I've got my apple in my hand there. Oops. Oh, what happened then? Oh, you were kidding me. Go away. That's better. Um, here's my apple in my hand there. I'm going to chomp on that. I'm going to break it down and... Um, make it smaller and smaller so I can swallow it. Some of the glucose that's available in that apple will get taken up by the blood in my cheeks. But I'm going to swallow it down the esophagus into my stomach here, which will churn away and break it down further into a thing called chyme, so it's a bit of a, a soup almost. And that, so there's acid and uh, protein breaking down enzymes here in my stomach. There's the pancreas releasing lots more enzymes just in the start of the small intestine, there's heaps of small intestine, about seven meters of small intestine all wrapped around in there, where lots of enzymes are working away to break down the food, find the amino acids to make proteins, find the fatty acids and the triglycerides to make lipids, find the glucose. And that's all then absorbed into the bloodstream. And then we enter the large intestine, and this travels around the outside here, and forms poo, feces. And in the large intestine, it's really about getting all the last bits of water and stuff and salts you can out of the food before we get rid of it at the other end. So in a sense, this is a big hose built around inside our body. So your food never physically enters your body. It's always against an excess, an outside surface. The nutrients in the food get to cross across. So what comes out the other end isn't a waste product of the body. It's a waste product of what we can't digest from the food. So it's what's been allowed to pass through. It's a little bit complex an idea, but we'll play around that idea a bit. Oops, that's not just refusing to do what I wanted to do again. Um, of course, we're very lucky. Um, most animals are adapted to eat lots of food when there's food around, ready to starve when there's no food around. So they have feast and famine. In our very privileged world that we live in, we have food all the time. So one of our problems in our Western world is people carry too much weight, uh, like me. Um, because we 
stuck away the spear, waiting for that famine to arrive so we can survive it. But they never come. So we actually take a lot of the excess carbohydrate and pop it away as glycogen and store it around our muscles and things, which is fine. It's, you know, we can burn it down quickly when we need it. But then if we've got more, that becomes adipose tissue. So adipose tissue is the sort of stuff we put around our tummies that we don't want. Um, and it's always also the last that we break down. So we're always using the stores closest to our muscles and adipose is always broken down last, which is why it's so stubborn and hard to get rid of. Um, and that's a very quick little trip through the digestive system and the requirements for life.